Hello everyone, welcome back to Marine's World. As you can see, Bear's interrupting the sewing yet again, but I'm in the midst of quilting on the quilt. I've really been enjoying it and I'll show you exactly what I've been doing and uh, a little bit about the quilt uh, after you've seen the ink tense tutorial that I filmed earlier today. So I'll cut to that now and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, I've got my ink tanks blocks. You can see they're well used. I hardly ever take them out of the thing. I use them almost like a watercolour tray uh, and I pick up the colour directly from them. I think when I was first learning, I saw people putting the colour on like this and then watering it. And I actually don't do that anymore. I use them differently from that. So I'm going to show you two different techniques. I've got my water here, just out of shot, put it there. I've got my brushes, I've got from thick ones to fine ones. Probably just need the thick ones at the moment. Uh, I've got some pencils, they're the only ones I've got. I've only got five. I've got my hair dryer because it's handy for drying everything quickly. Uh, and you can see it's very painted up. It's because I use that actually when I'm doing acrylic pouring. Um, it does still dry hair. I don't, I don't, I don't mind that it's got paint on. Oh, uh, anyway, I've got my hair dryer plugged in ready. Uh, one thing to say is I've decided to go with eight or twelve pages for both of the books. Um, eight is about the least you would want to do. I'm not sure how long everything's going to take because I've never done a book with having to film it and, and let everybody uh, see what they're doing if they want. So I'm just going to see how it goes really. And originally I was going to do eight by six cardboards. I'm still doing that for the stitched book. So that's this one where I've drawn around the thing. But actually for the other, for the flower book, for my book, I've cut that down and I'm actually only going to be doing four and a half by six. I just decided that was more the size that I wanted to do. So first off, it's going to be, the first one I'm actually going to do is the blackbird. And I need, I want to colour the piece of cotton sheet that I've cut out to put the blackbird on, which I'll start on Sunday. So I'm going to start colouring this page. Um, I've got my water. I'm actually going to wet the fabric first. I'm on top of the greaseproof paper. Uh, this is the one I've used before. You can see the bunny colours on it. That doesn't matter. And what to do is crumple it up tight in a ball and then flatten it out and you'll find that it just stays flatter without curling up and it's quite a nice surface to work on. So I'm going to wet the fabric with my big brush and I want sort of a sky grading down to green on here um, so I'm going to oh the colours coming up from there that's fine so I'm just going to pick up some colour from here and I don't need very much also, you can use these palettes. I sort of just put water in there. I'm going to pick up some of the colour and put it into the water. And then making sure my brush is full of water, I'm just going to stroke it on. And you can see straight away, it makes a lovely coloured wash. Actually, I'm quite liking that coming up. I should have used my clean sheet. I'm not really bothered, it's part of the... So I'm going to just put that on. If I want that a bit darker, I can put some water in my little thing. I'm going to take colour off the next one. This is a really dark. I'm just going to wash that on there. And you can see it all just flows together like a beautiful watercolour. But knowing that this is uh, colour fast once it's dry and once, it's, once you've ironed it. So I want to do green towards the bottom. Uh, again, I'm going to water the fabric first. If you don't water the fabric first, you you sort of get the hard lines, which I don't like. Maybe that's something you do want. 
So again, I'm going to pick up, I want to put some water in another little hole here. Sometimes I use the box lid. If you can see on here, you see that I've used the lid to mix the water up. So sometimes if I want a lot, I just use the lid, but I'm just going to put some water in there. I'm going to pick up this green here and I just wipe it over as if it's a paint palette into, into there. I'm going to add a bit more water to my brush because I want it to be loose. It's easier to, to put extra colour on than to take it off. See how dark that is. Maybe I just want some extra water there. While it's wet, you can move it around. Can you see there where I didn't put the water on the fabric? It's not actually moving very much, but if I put water on, it'll move into it. Which you can, you can exploit that by leaving a hard edge or not. So I'm just going to put more green on here. I just want a really nice watery background to put my blackbird on top of. And I'm not particularly trying to get anything, I'm not trying to make it look like anything. I just want a nice bluey greeny sort of background and I think that might be it. I might not need anything else. I'm going to put that green on, tie down here. Actually, I really like the way that sometimes you get serendipity and sometimes you just, you know, look, look at that lovely blue coming there. So I'm just stroking down and taking it on. I'm not trying to paint anything in particular. I just want a general sense of a coloured background for my blackbird to go on. But always working into the wet cloth. I think I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with it actually. So I'm going to, I can start and dry it. So I'm going to carry on drying that and then hang it up and come back to you with the next way of doing it. I have got, I've just torn a length off my old sheet and I've ironed it so that it's as crease free as I can get. And then I've cut a piece off the bundle web on the bundle under. And I'm just going to iron it on with my iron on quite a hot heat really because this is a cotton sheet. It doesn't really matter where you put it on your piece of material, but I'm putting it near the edge so I don't like to waste anything. So I just need to iron this on. Just take seconds. I've cut a bigger piece than I need because I'll always use spare painted fabric. My new sheet of grease proof on here and I'm going to get the bonded piece of cotton. Okay, I've got my bonded piece of cotton here that I've put the bond web or the wonder under on. It makes the fabric really stable for doing some different sort of a technique. You don't have to colour the whole big piece and I've actually done quite a big piece and I've got a, a lot of the cotton that I haven't bonded as well. You can see the difference in the texture. Uh, but I, you, you, I just like to do it a bit at a time or you can just go ahead and colour a load of big piece in. But the, at the minimum, you want to colour in enough to make your front and back of your book. So I would lie your templates on your piece of bonded cotton. Make sure you know where the edge is and you want a couple of inches all the way around it with a bit in the middle. And at the minimum, you want to be colouring that amount in. I'm just probably going to do quite a big bit because uh, once I get going, I really like doing it. Again, I'm going to do, I'm going to use my big brush that I've put somewhere. I've got my water, my brush. I'm going to use the ink tense and we'll see how we go. Um, another thing to say is that I don't really bother too much about putting my brush on top of different ones. If they're in the same colour family, that's fine. If I was going to go to from green to yellow, I'd definitely wash my brush. I don't like to mess them up too much. But 
other than that, I do try to just stroke from one to the other. The only exception is white, and I'll explain a bit about the white later on. We're going to start off again by actually wetting. If you, I'll try and show you the difference. In fact, I will show you the difference. If I want to do, um, we'll just, we'll take the, take the, we'll take a green. We'll take that green. And I take that out and I put a mark on. It's really lovely. And I can shade it like that. And then I come to put the water on it. It does, it does go lovely. And you put the water on it and you can make it go where you want. But you sort of never lose, well in my opinion, you don't lose the sense of the strokes of it underneath. And although I can put a lot of water on there, I can actually still see where I made that first stroke. So I like to use it more like a watercolour, which although it's an ink, it is a water-based ink. So I'm going to water right up to the edge of where I've put the bonding on. Okay, I've watered quite a big area that's on the camera. It's all wet. It's not running dripping wet, but it is wet. And I'm working on top of my greaseproof paper, which if you're on a cutting mat or something or a plastic bag, that's fine, just in case you end up with lots of water. And really, um, this, I'm thinking about this as being the front of my flower book. I really just want it to be really pretty and colourful. I'm going to go in with some green first and I'm just going to stroke it off the, off the block and just start somewhere and just stroke it on. And you can see because the fabric is already wet and I can put more water on, I can put it where I like, but they're going to mix really lovely. I'm going to go to purple because I like that purple. Oh my goodness, that's so nice. You don't have to do it side, you can do whatever you like. They, I would start off quite pale and intensify the colour as you go because you may not want it to be all really dark. And as you can see, I'm not particularly painting anything. I'm just letting the colour do its magic. Try this one here. I don't think I use this one very much. So if I hadn't got wet fabric, that would have been far too dark. But as you can see, I've added more water there because I want more of a wishy-washy watercolour -y effect. I'm going to go in with this green, which is really nice. I like this green, it's very mossy colour. As soon as I feel it's too dark, I'm straight away going into my water, grabbing some more and helping that to just disperse into the colour. I'll put some more greens down here. In the end, I'll be able to choose the piece I like the most for my front cover. I may want more bluey greens, I may want more pinky purples. It doesn't really matter, it's just whatever. See, that's a bit bright. I'm going to put some water in and just water that out. And I'm going to go in with that inky blue and just tone that down because that's not quite what I'm after. They will mix so don't over paint them too much they will end up muddy but you can definitely over paint while it's wet. I think I'm going to have a bit more blue here I like this blue just going to run it in and a nice bit of teal I think I try not to let the pans get too much water in, but you can sort of pick it up with your brush. I've got the water there that I did the other one with. That's lovely. That's going to go in. Just going to keep brushing it till I'm happy. I think I want more purple. Take that purple. Put a bit more purple up here. Oh, that's lovely. It's 
So the effect I'm going for at the minute is I just want a nice watercoloured piece of fabric that I can then cut off and use as I like. You can see where it gets to the end of the, the bonded bit of fabric. I think I'm almost finished with that. I'm not going to let it go onto the dry fabric without putting water on. If I can show you where the fabric's still dry, I'm just going to run the water in. I don't particularly want a hard edge. And I can colour that other bit of fabric later if I decide I want something else. So maybe at the moment this is as far as I'm going to go. I've got a bit more wet fabric here that I can that I can um, paint. Go with this pink. I like this pink. That's really nice. And put a bit more of that pink. So I'm actually darkening it down a bit now. And this bit of blue. I'm not actually trying too hard. I'm just picking up whatever colour I feel I want at the time. Put a bit of blue down here. It's quite a watery looking piece now that. It will dry a bit lighter, but they look beautiful once they've dried. I've got a bit of a line there. I'm going to try and get that out. Um, there we go. And you definitely can intensify the colour a lot. I'll try with this blue here. Then I'll go up there and straight away we've got a lovely bit of intense colour. This actually um, was the way that uh, I was being shown at the workshop the other week with the bonded fabric. I'd only ever done it the other way with no bonder web on the back. But this is a really good technique and I'll definitely be, I've definitely experimented with it since. So I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to do on that bit for now. So the next step is to dry this and I'm, I'm still going to dry it with the hairdryer. So I'm going to come back when it's dry. Okay, my two bits of cloth are dry now i'm really pleased with them this is the one without the backing uh that's going to be the back of the blue tit of the blackbird and i'm really pleased with that lovely watery gorgeous color that i've got on there that's going to make a beautiful background this just putting the water on the fabric and picking up the color and putting it on is the exact way that i painted the silk for the dragon and the green man in the original book. Um, I just put the water on and laid the paint down and let it just wash together and let it dry. Um, and then if there was excess paint on the page or on the cutting mat, I just picked it, I just picked it up with a bit of cloth to use somewhere else. So that is definitely that keeps your fabric really soft. That's nice for just stitching into and making a totally fabric book like my original one so that's lovely the piece of bonded fabric is also come out really pretty don't worry about the wrinkles in the fabric it's just the paper wrinkling that'll come out when the backing's off but while the backing's still on and the the original paint is dry the ink tense is dry there are more things you can do and because I'm not quite sure what I want to do on this bit yet, I'm going to use an old bit that I've got, that I had from doing the other bit. So I've got these two bits that are still actually that's got the paper backings come off, but the bonder stuff's still there, and that bit's still got its backing on. So I'm just going to show you another couple of things you can do with the intense. 
first off is the pencils. Yes, you can draw with them, but again, I don't think I'm overly keen on doing that. What I prefer to do is draw my design on here, if that's what I'm going to do. Actually, I'll draw, this is a bit dark to be doing it on, but I can show you the white specifically. So I'm just going to draw some petals on there. Just draw a flower. Really simple. Okay. Just a simple flower. So the white is is really interesting and it took me a little, you know, bit to okay, this is how I need to use the white. So the white goes on quite transparently. I'm just picking it up in here with my brush. And I sort of wait until I've got quite a bit sort of liquid in there. And then when you paint it on to dry cloth, it won't really spread out. So I'm just going to paint some of these petals. And you'll see that it sort of doesn't go on very white. And you think, oh, that's not a very good one. But it dries opaque. And you can build the layers up. So I'm just going to go in. I'm keeping it quite wet, but I don't want it just watery this time. I'm going on and I'm just going to colour those petals in over the top of the blue. This will be a good test of the of the uh, the white. So if I paint all of those petals in, just keeping the white going and don't worry that you can't see it very much. And you'll see it's not migrating out of the lines because I'm using it on top of dry fabric and I haven't got a huge amount of water on my brush. There's more, there's more of the ink tense than water. You can see it's starting to dry there. So that's one coat all the way round. I'll just dry it. I've just dried it with the hair dryer, so that's one coat of the white, and you can see how nice and opaque it's come. Now I'm actually going to do another layer, I want that to be even more white, and so I'm going to layer some of them in another layer again. And we're just layering up the white now because it's opaque, it's going to make. I'll just do half of it this time and you'll be able to see the difference. So there's three petals done with a second layer. Okay, I've just dried that again. Hopefully you can see the difference between the three that's got the extra coat on. So once it's dry, each layer won't mix with the next one. So now I'm going to show you how I use the pencils. Um, so I, I pick the colour up from the pencils and sometimes it's easier to use them in your hand like that than go to the blocks. But the, the actual colour is identical. So I'm going to put yellow middles on here. I'll see if I can bring you in a bit. So I'm going to put, I'm going to colour these petals in a bit more. So I've just got my water with my brush. I'm just going to use, pick up the colour from the end of the pencil. So I'm just going to pick up some paint, or some ink tents, and then I can put a little yellow middle going out from here. You see how lovely and bright that is over the white. I just do those three. And I'll do a different thing on the And then I can go, maybe I can, maybe I want a pink edge. I can just use a bit of water, I'll pick up a tiny bit. I'm just going to run it around the edge of there. Just a little bit, run it down. Don't use too much water, because so you don't want it running out of the... And although that looks dark again, remember that white's going to dry opaque. 
And on the other side, and I haven't got a pale blue, but I'm going to use this pale blue here. I'm going to just pick up a little bit of paint on my brush. And I'm going to make these a pale blue. Oh, that's quite a dark blue. Just water my brush down. There, just take that out. Actually, that's very near the background. We'll see how it goes and see what I want to do about it. I'm just going to colour that with that blue. And I'll maybe put a bit of a darker middle coming out. Let's dry that up and see what happens. Okay, all dried. So I've got nice pink edges to the white petal side. And this um, has got a, a, quite a nice blue. So what, what I also like to do is use a permanent pen and go around it afterwards. So I wouldn't do it first. I sort of do that last. So if I wanted to add some details, I can actually go around the edge once everything was dry and now you've got your painted air, painted petals as a guide to go around anyway and if I want to add details I could add stamens and all of a sudden you're actually building up a beautiful design and that's just a stick with a circle on the end and so we've got something looking really pretty we can draw a line and I'll just do a leaf with a pencil because I don't like the water to go on there so I'm just going to draw um, a leaf shape and another one. I'll just take my line onwards a bit. And then let's paint those leaves. We'll do the green straight on top without the white on the bottom. So I'll just take, I'm going to take this nice green here and just paint it straight on the leaf shape and this is all being done while the paper is still on which is giving you some stability this is the bit I hadn't really done before and it definitely makes a difference I was actually doing all of this exact same thing but without the bonder web backing but it makes, it makes quite a good difference. Just going to layer in a little bit of this, this colour here. And let's just see how that dries up. And see what we do. I've dried that up and actually I'm not very happy about how dark that's come out. It's not showing up as well as I want it to be. So I could have put white underneath like I did to the flowers. But what I've actually gone and done is I've gone and painted tea leaves on a bit of the bonded cotton. I've just cut it out of the corner of here. I did it on the dry fabric. I didn't wet the fabric first. I've just painted the leaves, dried it with the hairdryer and then I've put a line around it with my pen and I'm just going to cut them out around the edge like that. Don't waste any of your bonded paper. It can always be used 
in lots of different ways and we'll be doing that during the pages. I will definitely be doing it. In fact, this little experiment of a flower has come out pretty enough that I'm probably going to be using it even though I was just doing it as an experiment for you. So I'm going to take the backing paper off, both of them. And then I'm going to iron them onto there like that and I'll do that now. I've ironed them on. I'm now going to take my pen and I'm just going to add the extra details. I'm going to go around that edge again just because that's the way I like to, to do it but you don't have to it just depends what style you want to do. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to put some veins on. Equally I want to show you, you can do it with the ink tents. I'll pick it up on here. I like this charcoal colour here. Just, I like this, this charcoal. I'm going to get it on my, pen, on my brush, my fine brush. And because this is dry, I can just go straight in with my brush and use it like a drawing. And again, that's completed that quite nicely. I'll just do the edge like I did with the pen. I'm just hardly touching really, just running the brush round. So that little piece now, I suppose what I could do is I can cut that up nicely. Maybe I'll just make a... Maybe I don't even need to make a square. No, I think I will make a square or an oblong. I'm going to cut it out. And these bits, see that lovely piece there? It's where I've transitioned a blue to a green on something else. I can just take that and I might even be able to use it like that. I don't know yet, so I'm not willing to cut it up yet. Um, I could use that along the bottom of a page. I could use that to do all sorts of things. So I'll just leave that as that. All these little pieces, I think, are really useful. They've got bonding paper on the back. You can iron them on and use them in lots of different ways. I'm just going to tidy this little piece up here. by cutting. Oh, I can hear Boo again. Can you hear everyone? There. I'm going to leave that little piece of green on the top of there because I think it's quite nice. So there's a little piece of a piece of artwork that's now ready. I can iron it onto a page here. I can put it on the front of my book if I wanted to. Um, so I'm just going to keep that to one side because that was just a practice piece just to show you how things could go. Um, but again, that those leaves are all... Sorry. Those leaves are all bonded on. This has had the white, I did the pink on this side and the blue on the other. Works really well. So they take a bit of getting used to. Uh, and everything I've done there, I could have done and have done in the past with acrylic paint. It's just the colours are a lot more vibrant on this. And I feel, I actually just like, I really like using them. So I've used them a lot since I've got them. So I'm going to keep that little bit and go back to the sewing. Yes, Boo. We're back on the quilt. Um, I've done quite a bit since last Sunday. Um, I've already quilted about five of the circles. I had a few decisions I needed to make, whether it was going to be hand or machine. I am doing it with hand quilting. I've got some um, hand quilting thread here. I can't remember where it's from because it's lost its it's lost its little thing. I think it's LYS or YLS or something like that. Anyway, I'm using that because I didn't want the quilting to really stand out very much because uh, the pattern is everything on this. Uh, but I am doing what would be called big stitch quilting because it has been quite difficult to get through at times. There are so many seams to be going through. Um, another thing I had to decide was what to do with the middles where I had the 
only quilting, like there where I've done the machine quilting, uh, which I do like. Um, but obviously I can't do that type of vermicelli by hand on this thickness. So what I've decided to do is draw myself a design with just the lid of a tin here. So I just used the tin lid and drew around it with my disappearing pen. And I've used a variegated soft cotton, this one which has the colours in that I'm using. And I've just gone round those lines and it's made a really nice middle for those, for the block. The other thing with that is I can't do in and out on that. So I'm actually stab stitching it in and out to get it small enough. Um, if I had something framed to put the quilt in, I probably would have quite liked that, but I just don't have anything. So, I'm attempting to do the big stitch quilting on this, but on here I definitely, I try and arrange myself so I'm stabbing down and pulling up in two motions for that bit particularly. But then that made the other ones not look quite the same. And so what I've done is, in fact this one's started, I've started to just go around the, I'll pull you in for that. I've gone round the actual petals of the machine stitched ones with the coloured thread. That one's to finish still. But I'm just going in and out on the top layer. I don't need to quilt it because it's already been quilted. So that should make all of the middle squares look very similar. Um, so while I get on with it, I'll tell you a little bit about the quilt. It definitely... I'm, going to, I'm, I'm on the edge here so I'm going to hold my hand underneath as well and I've got my thimble on. Um, it definitely was 2013 when I started it because believe it or not I actually found the, the website online that I'd done it from. So it was actually a mystery quilt um, and I think I found out about it just a couple of weeks after it had started and thought Oh, never, never been involved in a mystery quilt before, but I just took the chance and decided that's what I'd, I'd join in with it. Um, the lady put down what the requirements were, and it's one of the few times that I've actually gone and uh, bought fabric for a quilt instead of just using all thrifted. So I had a lot of these beautiful patterns and designs. I had a lot of that already. What I didn't have was the requirement to have about five yards of differently coloured creams or whites. And so I did go out and buy sort of a yard or a metre of about four or five different, different sort of whites. So I could scrappy them together. Uh, so it's called The Calm Blue Ocean. I found, I found the website, it was actually a blog. Uh, called Silly Goose Quilts and the pattern and everything, the PDFs are still on her site but it seems like the lady isn't doing it anymore. She hasn't uploaded anything um, since I think 2021 or something like that. So I'm not, sh I'm not sure what's going on there but you definitely can still access her quilt design and I do think it's so beautiful. When I was doing it um, she was very clever in just posting the different blocks you had to get done and a more experienced quilter than me might have been able to see where it was going but at the time I just didn't and when it came to the last couple of weeks where all these individual blocks started to be put together to see the circles emerge from all the straight lines was absolutely amazing to me and I still get a thrill when I see it actually because I just never realised until about I think it's a 10 weeks mystery quilt and it was about week eight or so before I realised it was going to make these beautiful petal shapes and I was so pleased with my colour palette so I used about five different creams different there's plain ones and patterned and then I decided to try and limit my colours uh, instead of being totally scrappy I was really blues greens pinks 
and that's what I tried to keep it to. Um, and I am so pleased. I'm so pleased. I'm actually finishing it. It's um, it's been a joy this last week to just see that it was getting more and more done. But because it's although it's big stitch quilting, I'm still following the original design that I was going to be doing, and uh, it's a lot of heaving around. That's why I'm in the dining room because my work table is covered with ink tents and all the the tutorial that I've just done um, and so the only place I've got big enough to put the quilt out onto is actually my dining table so the dining table is being cleared again uh, just to be able to put the quilt out so I can see how I'm going I, I do try and put them onto my needle but actually it's a bit thick and it's a bit tough to put the needle through. In fact, I've had about three needles on the go until I've decided this is the one, which is quite a big needle, uh, that this is the one that I'm using for it. And the stitches are a heck of a lot bigger than I would have normally done, but it's what I can manage with, with the time. And because I'm enjoying quilting it, uh, I'm just going with the flow. And I'm not going to be too precious about it. I'm just going to enjoy the fact that it's going to be finished and I'll be able to put it on my bed. So because on the machine quilting I had done round the petals in the ditch and then also about a quarter of an inch in, I'm following that. So I have, I am quilting in the ditch all the way around there. And then this line, which is probably, it's more than a quarter of an inch, more like just under a centimetre around. And then the middles are getting the same little motif in, but with the coloured thread. That's done. I have done quite a bit since Sunday. In fact, I worked at it nearly all yesterday. And after I came back from shopping, um, I just set myself up and decided to work on it. But it is a bit of a heave round as you go around. I can't sort of... It would be quite handy if I stood up and quilted, I think. Um, but then it does you back in. Anyway, I shall quilt on a bit more. Uh, I think I need to be back into the middle a bit. Yes, I've done this one. I'm going to do... I'm going to do this one here. I lay it out flat, got my knot, I'm just going to pop the knot through, pop it through here, and I'll go around in the ditch first. Oh, boo. You just love it, don't you? So I'm just going to do as small a stitch as I can manage as I'm going round it. And I usually do the in the ditch bit first and then the other bit second. It's very damp outside. So definitely, although it's sunny now, not quite gardening, I'd get soaked. So I definitely need to do a bit more gardening. Um, because it's getting, it's getting overgrown again. But now I'm obsessed with doing the quilt. So there's not, not, there's not going to be any gardening getting done any time soon. So I'm just picking and the most I can manage with the thickness of this is two stitches. I'm just pulling it through and making sure that I lie flat. And I don't know, I don't think this is going to take me hugely long length of time. Because of the size of the stitches, I think. As, I, as soon as I've gone all the way around one, I then draw the middle on and, and do that. And then I know that that's where I'm up to. I hope you're enjoying whatever you're crafting with everyone. What I should have said when I was doing the tutorial is these little pieces of whatever, the little, I mean I've made that into a little motif, um, it doesn't just have to be painted on. All I need to do is take the backing off this now 
that's then ready to iron on to wherever. But before I do that, I can go and embroider on this. I could have embroidered the stamens. In fact, I might still do that. I could have embroidered over the top of the leaves. Um, it's the way I did the blue tit on the other little book. Um, I can embroider the stem. And because it's got that backing of the glue ready to iron on, it's actually quite a stable bit of fabric to be, to be um, sewing on more stable than this will be but it's just a different technique and both are equally lovely um, so I, I definitely don't want any backing on that but you can just see the difference that even though the paper's off that's made a difference to how that fabric reacts and so you just get a different a different technique and a different way of working and I love both of them there's not one better than another it's just you need to expand your repertoire so you can do all sorts of different things. Uh, so that's there. So they're ready for Sunday uh, for when I start the blackbird and the other. Actually, I think I might be... What did I do? Oh, I've pulled my thread off. Um, I think I might be making the outer covers of the little book on Sunday and starting the blackbird. I'm going to try and make Wednesdays the quilt until it's finished, um, but with any other little tutorials that might come up. Sometimes I think instead of putting things off, which I've obviously I have done, so it's not like I'm not um, saying things from lack of experience, uh, I definitely do leave things, but sometimes I just feel, why didn't I start that? That's what I'm thinking now. I'm thinking, why didn't I just get on with it before? And I honestly just don't know why, because sometimes once you start, even if you just do 10 minutes, think I'm going to do this for 10 minutes, it might just get you enthused and you might feel half an hour has gone by before you realised, or it might just give you your enthusiasm back. Uh, because there's definitely projects or well, just such as this where something's gone wrong and you just lose that oh I can't be bothered but actually I think that's part and parcel of creativity your mind goes on to something else you start doing something you get really interested in it but really we've all got I'm sure we've all, I, I can't be the only one that has just pop that knot through. I can't be the only one that has um where did I put my scissors? That has works in progress waiting or unfinished things. I've lost my scissors. Oh there you are. I've got a new pot. I I put my threads. I've got a new little pot. Look, how beautiful is that? I was in Darlington um yesterday. No, Monday. I was in Darlington on Monday. I went into a charity shop looking for something and I saw this on the side. And I just thought, that's that's so lovely. It's coming home with me. It was going to have all my specials in. So like my bits of antique lace and bits of uh, Victorian beads and everything. But all of a sudden, it's ended up being a little work pot. So I've actually, I've actually been keeping my pen, my bunny threads, the... Um, quilting cotton, my needle and my thimble. That's what I've been keeping in it. So I think I might actually line it with some fabric. Oh, I'm not sure yet. I haven't quite decided. But it's so pretty. It's getting some love. Anyway, I'm going to carry on with this quilting a bit longer. Um, see how much I can get finished today. I'll have everything ready to start putting the books together and doing the blackbird for by Sunday and I just wish you happy sewing, crafting, knitting, whatever you're doing. Um, definitely send me comments, I'm still reading them all and love seeing where you're all from and subscribe if you want to see how we get on with the book. And if you're following along, um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to see something. I have joined Instagram, but I am so all at sea with it. 
that I'm not quite sure what I'm doing but it'll be a learning experience and that's the thing having new experiences to uh, learn from is always good keeps our brains active that's what I think anyway uh, so happy crafting happy sewing happy whatever you're doing and I'll see you on Sunday bye bye from Marion's World <laughs>